How do you feel about human sacrifice to appease the gods? Most likely you are disgusted, as am I. So why can't Christians make the connection between their religion and ancient pagan Greek mythology? Christianity is written in the Greek language by Greek people who were very accustomed to Greek mythology. I want to share with you a story that I just learned today about an innocent Greek girl named Iphigenia, and I want you to pay attention to the similarities between this Greek myth and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Iphigenia was the daughter of King Agamemnon and Queen Clytemnestra, and thus the princess of Mycenae, which is in Greece. Therefore, she was of royal lineage like Jesus. In the story, King Agamemnon offends the goddess Artemis on his way to the Trojan War by successfully hunting one of Artemis's sacred stags. She retaliates by preventing the Greek troops from reaching Troy unless Agamemnon sacrifices his eldest daughter, Iphigenia, at Eulis as a human sacrifice. Iphigenia and her mother Clytemnestra are brought to Aulis under the pretense that Achilles will marry her. In some versions of the story, they realize the truth, while in others, Iphigenia remains unaware of her imminent sacrifice until the last moment, believing until the moment of her death that she is being led to the altar to be married. Now let's read directly from the account according to Euripides. We brought your child to the place where the Greek army had gathered, all together and all at once. When King Agamemnon saw his daughter proceeding to the altar to her death, he heaved a deep sigh and turned his head to one side and wept. He covered his eyes with his robe. But the young girl stood beside her father who had given her life and said, Fathers, as you bid me, I am here. I give my body freely on behalf of my country, for all the land of Greece. Lead me to the altar. There, if that is God's will, sacrifice me. May this gift from me bring you success. May you win the crown of victory and win thereafter a glorious homecoming. And no, do not let any man lay his hand upon me. In peace and in good heart I offer you my throat. So she spoke, and all stood by in wonder at the courage, yes, the virtue of her words. Then Talthybius, for so he was commanded, stood before the assembled army and ordered them to watch and to keep holy silence. Then Calchas the prophet took from its sheath a sharp knife and put it in a basket studded with gold. And upon the young girl's head he put a garland. Achilles, son of Peleus, circled the altar of the goddess, basket in hand, and upon her he sprinkled holy water and he said, Artemis, daughter of Zeus, slayer of wild beasts, you that spin the silver light at night, receive this sacrifice which we offer to you. We, the Greek army and King Agamemnon, Offer to you the pure blood that flows from a virgin's throat. Grant our ships an untroubled journey. Grant that our spears will sack the towers of Troy. The priest seized the knife and offered a prayer as he looked for a place to plunge the knife's point. My soul was deeply troubled and in pain. I stood by, head lowered. Suddenly, it was a miracle. Everyone had heard the sound of the knife. But no one could see where in the world the young maiden had disappeared to. The priest cried out. The army echoed his cry, and then they saw the miracle, impossible to believe even as it happened before their eyes. There on the ground lay a deer, gasping for breath. She was a full-grown deer, beautiful, and the altar of the goddess was dripping with her blood. Then Calchas spoke. Imagine the joy. Leaders of this, the Greek army, do you see this victim that the goddess has laid upon her own altar, this mountain deer? She accepts this offering with greater gladness than the child, for her altar will not now be stained with noble blood. She rejoices in the sacrifice, and she grants us fair sailing and success at Troy. Therefore, courage, to arms, to the ships, for on this day we must leave the hallow bay of Aulis and cross the Aegean Sea. When the carcass had been reduced to ashes in Hephaestus's fire, Calchas offered a prayer for the safe homecoming of the army. Agamemnon sent me to tell you these things, to tell you of the good fortune he has received from the gods, and of the fame that is now his and will not die. I tell you what I saw, for I was there. There is no doubt your child has been taken to live amongst the gods. 
So in both cases, we have an innocent royal child who has pure blood, who is doomed to be a human sacrifice to appease the wrath of a God for the greater good of humanity. They both accept the sacrifice of their life if it is according to God's will and if it will bring about the victory and a glorious homecoming. There is a holy silence and reverence as they offer their lives as a sacrifice. They both get a crown of thorns or garland put on their head, and they are both anointed by those that are closest to them. And in both cases, there is a sudden, miraculous, mysterious disappearance of the body, and something else appears where the body once was. God is appeased by the sacrifice and promises victory and safety and everlasting fame and glory. Then the child goes on to live with God, and there were even eyewitnesses to testify that these things really happened. Or so the story goes.